It's Saturday night. It's almost live. And it's right up a big tower in London's Westminster. It's Sam Delaney's News Thing. Desperately trying to appeal to the youth vote this week, the K is for cool. It's Stephen K. Amos. Ooh, sick burn. It's Holly Burn. And yes, she would like to see your awesome new breakdance moves. It's Helen Wood. Coming up, the EU debate, the truth. Only joking, it'll be another load of partisan bollocks. How many cars can a Sam Cam Cam if a Sam Cam could cam cars? And tonight's special guest, she spells EU, EW. It's UKIP's Elizabeth Jones. Hi, welcome to Sam Delaney's News Sing. Thanks for joining me, panel. Fuck me, we still haven't had that EU referendum, have we? This is more torturous than the wait for the next Star Wars film. And Luke Skywalker's <laughs> not even in this. It's complicated, it's confusing. No one knows what's true and no one knows what's a lie. All we know is we're obviously going to vote Remain. I mean, there's one thing we know about the British is that we never take a chance on an election. The last time we voted for anything remotely risky was when Michelle McManus won Pop Idol in 2003. <laughs> and look how that turned out. <laughs> Pete Waterman. <laughs> Walked off stage in disgust and no-one's seen him <laughs> since. <laughs> we never take the bold or radical choice. Take the 2010 BBC Sports Personality of the Year. We all remember that when Gaza lost out to this bloke. <laughs> Some fella who sits on a fucking horse while it runs around. I mean, come off it. This was the year Paul Gascoigne intervened in the psychotic rampage of deranged murderer Raoul Moat with nothing but a six-pack, some roast chicken and a fishing rod. If that's not sporting personality, then I'd like to bloody know what is. Oh, and people might say, but Sam, Gaza wasn't a professional sportsman at the time. Oh, yeah? Well, what was the fucking fishing rod for, then? Sticking up his ass? <laughs> anyway, look, recent polls suggest that the Remain have got the support of both the under-24s and the over-65s in this country making the EU the only issue that unites students and the elderly more than taking pills and watching daytime TV. <laughs> this is how they pitch for the youth vote this week. <laughs> Brap. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sick stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. If you want to appeal to the kids, you've got to communicate in the only way they understand, by leaving the G off the end of a word <laughs> and sticking a hashtag on the front. The kids bloody love hashtags. Put a hashtag in front of anything and they'll buy it. I took my four-year-old son to the GPs the other day for his hashtag injections. <laughs> I have never seen him so excited. <laughs> Problem is, young people shout a lot about their voting intentions without ever actually bothering to vote. They're the bastards who tricked us into thinking that Labour might win the election last year by bleating on and on about how much they love Dead Miliband on social media. <laughs> Come election day, where the fuck were they? <laughs> Sat in bed tweeting. <laughs> if you want to win an election, it's the old people you need on your side. Those bastards will turn up and vote for anything. They love polling stations. <laughs> Sometimes I see elderly people just standing outside community centres wearing rosettes and clutching those funny little pencils completely outside of election time, you know, just to be ready. <laughs> but as we know, old people really don't like change, and leaving the EU has started to sound like a bloody pain in the arse. The Brexit camp keep going on about all these complicated plans for a post-EU Britain, in which we have to form loads of complex trade agreements with tiny, unpopular nations. I mean, old people are not going to vote for that. Change the day of the fucking bin collection and they practically <laughs> riot. <laughs> The Brexit camp should have just played it safe and kept going on about immigration. But they didn't because they were afraid of sounding racist, which, ironically, is the one thing that might actually have got them the elderly vote. The Remain <laughs> camp, meanwhile, understand how to appeal to our instinctive caution and fear of catastrophe. They basically run a campaign based on sucking their teeth, like an unscrupulous mechanic about to quote you on a set of new brake pads. Let's face it, if Britain was ever going to change our relationship with the EU, we would have done it the same way we do everything. We would have thought about sending a strongly worded email and then decided it's probably too much of a hassle. Panel, is leaving the EU worth all the faff? I mean, we're going to have to print change of address cards and everything, Stephen. 
I, the, <laughs> the problem is with the whole campaign is that they're treating all of us like imbeciles. Mm. Like we're stupid, right? They're fear mongering on that side, and they're going and they're doing the, the complete opposite on the other side. In fact, what they should be doing is giving us a clear cut reasons as to why we should stay or why we should go. If I was a Ute Dem, when I damn Ute Dem, I can yeah. do that thing. I got my phone. I can do my hashtag. Yeah. I still would not know what's going on. And I see big posts that say, "Oh my goodness, if we stay, don't forget." Turkey are going to join. Oh, no, and not the we, Turks. No, we only like Turkey at Christmas. Mm. We can't have it all year round. <laughs> Should the Brexit campaign be more racist, do you think, Helen Wood? I mean, no-one's mentioned Hitler yet much, have they? This, is, this will be seen as, like, a racist comment. But say it. The fact that you've got kids in schools, one in particular, I'm not going to say who, but, like, his mum is really pissed off at the fact that a lot of his learning is being slowed down at the fact that a massive majority of his class is, is foreign pupils and they can't yeah. talk English, which I just... I think that's wrong. That's, not, that's nothing to do with racism. Mm. I just think we should be able to choose who comes into the country. Mm. Um, and, and there's various other things as well. Um, the the fact that line, the, bene though. the benefits as well, the benefits system, if people can come into the country and work and contribute and things like that, then, yeah, perfect. Like, be more like Australia. I think that's what our country needs. Oh, oh no. no, thank listen, you. Listen, listen. There's a, there, there, before we get all a bit too lefty about this, the truth is, is that we know that actually immigrants bring in more than they take out of this country. We get, a, we make a profit out of these immigrants, but that's right? That's fine if we're choosing them to come in. But, what about the ones? That, what about the rapists yeah, and the murderers? Yeah, that you got to always look you out for them. And then you can't get rid of them. Yeah. Why are we encouraging more to come over? No, I, don't, I don't think you can say that. <laughs> at all. In Helen's that. events, the truth is, the Brexit camp. No, we cannot control. Our, uh, how many people come into yeah. this country as long as we're in the EU. And that is their strongest trump card yeah. because, yeah. you know, whatever side it's of the political problem. spectrum you're on, that's pretty objectionable, isn't it, Stephen? It is objectionable, but you have also got to uh, remember that we can't come into this country without a passport anyway. Do you know the, the worst thing that can happen? What about if we do exit and all those people who've gone to live in the Costa Brava and the Costa del Sol, they'd have to come back? Do you want them? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you say we get a lot from Europe. Uh, panel, just quickly, what's your favourite duty-free item? I, for one, will fucking miss a jumbo Toblerone. Uh, back <laughs> what about back. them jumbo chupa chups? Yeah, what lovely. What's your head? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stephen, what do you usually go for? Uh, back in the day, it used to be uh, not very PC at the moment, but it used to be cigarettes, but, yeah. but the, the, there's not really much of a saving anymore. Yeah, what about you? Mine are definitely be alcohol. Alcohol and makeup. I'll what, wear. what sort of duty free? Because sometimes you find yourself in a duty free and you, you buy things that you would never ordinarily buy if you were in, say, I Tesco. Buy shit. A, li a little M&M's, so man. Shit. Yeah, a little M&M's. Yeah. And a That's like playing. A trumpet and a flavour of booze, like some taboo, yeah. that you would never consider back home <laughs> if you're in Precious. Ah, yeah. oh, Europe is great. <laughs> Panel, thank you very much. Now, David Cameron's been shopping last weekend. He rocked up to a second-hand car dealership in Oxfordshire and paid a grand and a half for a Nissan Micra with 100,000 miles on the clock. Not for him, of course, he's the Prime Minister. He gets carried around by Indians in one of those wardrobes with poles <laughs> for handles. <laughs> No, this car was for a nice little run around for his missus, Samantha Cameron. Tell you what, that'd be a shit car for my missus, let alone his. <laughs> I mean, he's the Prime Minister. Couldn't he have at least got her a nice Fiat 500 on finance? The silly oh, bastards bought her the sort of tinny old rust bucket that'll fucking implode at the merest brush from a double decker. He must want the poor cow dead. <laughs> she probably takes the kids out in that. If that's how David Cameron looks after his own family, how's he going to look after the rest of us? I mean, it's a hell of a security risk, too. Now Isis knows his missus is going around in a Nissan mic because she's a sitting duck. I'm guessing at 1,500 quid, that car is not going to be very bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless David Cameron is trying to send Isis a red herring. And his plan is that while their operatives are running around looking for a dopey posh bird in a Nissan, his Sam is actually safely stowed away in a flash mark with an SAS in the boot. Which is all very well. Clever plan, actually. But of course... That puts every dark-haired woman in a blue Nissan Micra in mortal danger of being isis <laughs> isis to death. <laughs> I'd like to address David Cameron right now. Listen, Cameron, my mum's got dark hair and she drives a Nissan Micra. <laughs> and if I ever see a poorly shot video on YouTube of her being drowned in a cage, I will hold you personally responsible. Of course, the other explanation for all of this is that it was just another attempt by the PM to seem normal. I bloody love it when politicians try to act normal. Take a look there. Zach Goldsmith trying to hold a pint. 
<laughs> that cunt doesn't know whether to drink it, wear it or fuck it, does he? Mind you, he's better at all this than Corbyn. Look at this. Look at that. Enormous vegetable. <laughs> and look at the marrow. <laughs> My name's Ben Elton. Good night. <laughs> and the Nissan Micra wasn't Cameron's first attempt at looking normal in a retail environment. There he is, trying to negotiate Tesco Metro. Mate, can you stop fannying about with your pretend shopping like you're an eight-year-old girl buying sweeties for a dolly and get on with running the flipping country? Put that basket down before you accidentally strangle yourself and we end up with Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. <laughs> None of us care if you're ordinary. You're the Prime Minister. You're supposed to be extraordinary. If we wanted our leader to be good at buying second-hand cars and handling shopping baskets, we'd have elected that squidgy-faced cunt off Don't Get Done, Get Dom. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that bloke, by the way. <laughs> Looks like the dungeon master out of Dungeons & Dragons, <laughs> only more cockney and better at finding bargains on the high street. <laughs> Panel, should we elect Dominic Littlewood as our <laughs> Prime Minister? <laughs> Holly Byrne. Is he the guy what does, like, cowboy builder stuff? Yeah. 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 Wonderful, wonderful fellow. You can trust the man like him. I don't know. Oh. type of guy, really. Really? Um, what I would say is, those cars, those Nissan Micros, I have no experience of them. They're really not my type of car. They have double pedals, don't yeah. they? Yeah. So, so maybe... maybe she doesn't drive. Oh, yeah, that could be it. And maybe he drives her around, but she gets to pretend. Exactly. <laughs> like That's... a kid in a driving suit. Exactly. She, just... By all accounts, even, she's very stupid. <laughs> you heard that about her? One thing about Sam, Samantha Cameron that I know is a fact is that she's descended from proper, proper, serious blood. Yeah. She's like uh, a descendant from uh, King Charles II. Yeah, so she's so really she... rich and posh. Yeah, exactly. So I think, I think she probably asked him to get uh, her, asked David to get her an estate, and he probably just went, you've got one, darling. So <laughs> he got her this <laughs> Nissan Micra, <laughs> and it's not really a Nissan Micra, it's a souped-up lawnmower, that's what it is. Yeah, it's crap. And you, it, over 100,000 miles on the clock, Nissan Micra, blue, this is a man who clearly does not care about resale value. No, absolutely not. But posh people are tight, aren't they, Helen? That's mm. why they get rich in the first tight place. Tight as cram. Yeah. Most of them are, anyway. Like, my granddad was, like, really well off, and he used to, he used to get his boxer shorts re-elasticated. Did he? Well, there you go. Fucking that's hell. how we became like well so off. well tight bastard. Yeah. From, oh, sorry, he's dead, but never mind. Stephen, have you ever met a politician in a normal environment? If so, what were they like? In a normal environment, I was in uh, on Tootney High Street once, mm. and I was in a pound shop, mm. and I bumped into Sadiq Khan. Really? Yeah. That's pretty. That doesn't get more normal. I was like, boom, man, you're keeping it real. And did you chat to him? Well, I asked him for a pound. <laughs> 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 I only had notes. So. Helen, have you ever met a politician in a in an outside of work situation? I've met Boris Johnson at the That's Spectators <laughs> summer party, really? and he said to one of his little friends that was stood near him that I was a pretty girl. So. How did no, you no, take that? that? <laughs> I didn't really say much. He's quite a scary-looking bloke. Bit, he's like, he's like a plant on legs. He's like a plant on legs? <laughs> he, <is. laughs> he looks like a fucking plant. Yeah. But it's nice of him to say, isn't it? It was cute. Oh, it was nice that he thought it was you were cute. Pretty. Cheers, balls. Um, uh, Holly, what about you? When I was 17, um, <laughs> and I was deputy head girl at my school, right. and I had to have lunch with Neville Trotter. Who the hell's that? A Tory MP for Tynemouth back in oh. the day. Yeah. Like that, that was an experience and all, let me tell you. What was he like? Just sort of a bit wet. Were you a head girl? He said I was pregnant. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> no. Thanks, panel. <laughs> Coming up. Fracking, a viable way to meet the UK's energy demands or the closest those cunts on the one show can get to saying the word fucking. <laughs> and we'll be joined by UKIP top brass Elizabeth Jones. Here she is in one of her campaign videos, shot instantly by Ridley Scott. Welcome back. Environmental campaigners were up in arms this week when North Yorkshire councillors voted to allow fracking in the town of Kirby, Miss Burton. So what is fracking? Obviously, I don't know. All I know <laughs> is that it involves digging. And anything involving digging is all right by me. <laughs> a prolific digger as a child, I used to dream of discovering oil in the backyard and finally being able to pay off Mum's maxed out Dorothy Perkins store card. <laughs> so that she would no longer cry herself to sleep every night with a bottle of Lambrini and six bars of fries, Turkish delight. <laughs> but I never found oil, 
All I found was some bits of a cup and I think the bones of Kevin, our cat, who had gone to live on a farm <laughs> some years previously. We've always envied those countries like, you know, Arabia and Dallas, where they had tonnes of delicious oil just a few feet below every inch of soil. Well, now we've got something close. It's called shale gas. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't touch it. But if you keep digging below the cat bones and broken china, you will almost definitely find it and use it to power your garden machinery. Yes, we are all J.R. Ewing or an Arab <laughs> prince now. But wait, don't start driving around in a massive limo and marrying 16 wives just yet, because the fun police are, of course, finding a way of ruining this amazing invisible gold that lurks beneath the surface of Britain. Because they don't like us digging. They say it makes the water dirty and causes minor, almost undetectable earthquakes. Listen. <laughs> All energy comes at a cost. Oil spills, nuclear meltdowns, those wind turbines <laughs> that keep beating the fuck out of birds. <laughs> Either you accept these minor problems or you give up your iPhone with the screen that goes all the way around the edges and your Netflix 4K <laughs> subscription and your big mouth Billy Bass that you've got on your toilet wall <laughs> and you live in the dark with no entertainment beside the sound of your own breathing and write in boobs upside down on your solar-powered <laughs> shitty calculator over and over again. The bad news about fracking is, although there is a shit ton of this magic gas hidden under our green aisle, most of it's in small pockets, so we'll need to dig thousands of holes to get it. The good news is, almost all of them will be up north. <laughs> no wonder this government's so keen on fracking. If we had an energy crisis in the past, they had to go to all the effort of conspiring with the President of America to invade a Middle Eastern country on some trumped-up charge so they could run off with all their oil. Now it turns out that they can just dig up the whole of Lancashire. And to be fair, they've always talked about creating a northern powerhouse. We just didn't realise it wasn't about giving power to the north, but nicking it out of the soil under their playgrounds. And if a few kids in Blackpool have to give up their Sunday league team <laughs> so the rest of us can leave our tellies on standby when we go on holiday, then who are we to stand in the way of progress? Panel, should all these northerners just stop complaining and pick up a fucking shovel? No. Stephen, you're the only non-northerner here. Well, I've got to say, as a southerner through and through, yeah, we tried it with the northerners with mining, yeah? We gave, <laughs> we gave you an industry, you, you <laughs> fucked that right up. <laughs> so, it's just, a, it's just a matter of time. Just give them something to do. You know, there's, there, there's depression up there. Sorry, girls, but it's true. Whoa. You know, there's no housing, there's no people. What about you know, miserable bastards down here? You, we've got yeah. it all, though. We've got you, it all. You bloody struck gold, so why are you moaning about it? You've been moaning about not having anything to do or any dough up there. You're basically the new Texas. If Texas, it's huge. You know, it can take eyesores. Yeah, it is an eyesore. But when the North can't take that. What sort and of energy the... should we be using? Listen, listen, listen. Oil, we should... The oil is not going to last forever. We need an alternative. It hasn't been proven that the gas that they found actually works. It hasn't been proven yet. There is no, there's no evidence Which to means suggest that works. Why that. aren't we looking into more sustainable energy that can, that can, you know, when you go to festivals and you, your, your battery goes on your phone mm. and you have to go to one of those tents what has all them um, um, static bikes yeah. and you have to ride a uh, static bike to, to motor your um, get iPhone. We should all get We back. should invest in more things like that. Oh, yeah. How far? We how far? Oh, come on. We need what, what next? Be... Harvesting our we... farts? No, but I think well, we should... We <laughs> Kinetic energy only is the so shittest long. energy because it's just such a pain in the ass, right? I invented a bike. It was called the Wanksicle, and it could be right. powered. Yes, they know more. By your own masturbation. We've got it. But I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Christ. Well, Sometimes it would be nice to put something in and get something out, wouldn't it? Oh, you know, if you, you, God, you said if that you... Right time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's why I had to have a Wanksicle because I wasn't getting enough of that. <laughs> Helen. Yes. Um, listen, if you could stop fracking, right, by using energy for just, that? It sounds rude, for no, just it? half the day, right? So you gave up using energy for half the day in order to stop fracking. Would you do it? My guess is, would you fuck? Yeah, no, I would. All right, switch the lights off in no, your house. I would too. Come on, then, Northerners. Of course, stop I, bleating. But, no, 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 you go I'm up north, right? Northern. You're all getting fake tans, right? That uses up a shit. Most of the fucking energy in this country. <laughs> what the fuck? What about Essex and places by like that? Women You're in the northwest fucking getting fake tans non-stop, right? No. You're the ones using most of the energy, right? If you just cut down on that, maybe we wouldn't have to come and dig up your fields. 
No, no I think disagree. it should be invested into arts and culture. Remember in um, Brastoff, and they all started, when the mining stopped, they all started learning to play brass instruments, and that's how they got the community going again. Listen, Let's learn to play some brass instruments. If we were to dark, believe the sentiment of schmaltzy movies set in the north of England had the solution to all of our fucking problems, right? Every kid would be dancing the fucking ballet. Why not? And trying Why to tend not? to a pet fucking kestrel. And then what's we're wrong with, what's like wrong fucking with medieval times. <laughs> You're off your fucking nut. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, panel. There now follows a message from the Right Honourable Jeremy Corbyn, leader of Her Majesty's Opposition. Hello there. I'm Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> That's right. I'm the fucking leader. Get used to it. I do not endorse pulling out of Europe. Mind you, I have pulled out of a few Europeans in my time. <laughs> and a good thing too. The last thing you want is some Spanish farmer coming round your villa with a shotgun accusing you of knocking up his daughter. <laughs> oh, you can bang on all you like about the common agricultural policy. You're still going to try to shoot your cock off, believe me. <laughs> still, that's another story for another day. Time for our special guest now, one of the few UKIP members not known for saying something absolutely mental. Let's see if we can change that tonight. It's Elizabeth Jones. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Sam. Thanks for joining us. So, your parents named you after the 1980s Argos jewellery line, didn't they? Uh, no, I wish, I, I wish, no, no, that's Elizabeth Duke, love. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking... All right. Uh, before the referendum, you lot wouldn't shut up about immigration, would you? But now, I think you've gone a bit coquettish and are talking more about sovereignty and the economy. Uh, have you worried that you just sounded really racist? No, it's not about sounding really racist. It's having a broad approach so that many uh, sections of society uh, will be open to the vote-leave argument. Mm. Yeah, but everyone cares about immigration. That's your trump card. I feel like you've neglected it. You should have hammered it a little bit more. Well, we have, but we're still putting it out there all the time. We're having regular public meetings, canvassing, leafleting sessions. We're always mentioning it, obviously, because of the sheer strain on public services. I mean, last year, there's about 330,000 net uh, migration into this country. And, of course, that's a huge knock-on effect yeah. with hospital spaces. Uh, the hospitals uh, being flat out are mainly because everyone's so bloody old. What are you going to do about them? Well... Yeah, I mean, cos they're a bigger threat than the Muslims, aren't they, the old people? They're the ones filling up the hospitals and costing all the money in pensions, aren't they? Well, to be fair to the old people, they have paid in. So if they have paid in for all those decades and decades and decades of hard work, I think they are entitled to a, a payout. The problem is everyone just wants to live forever. And if you've ever seen Highlander, <laughs> right, then you know that actually that's not all it's cracked up to be. It's a bloody pain mm. in the arse. Uh, I mean, it's just a tip from me, take it or leave it, but I would start focusing on the elderly as much okay. as the blacks and all that. <laughs> um, uh, who are the worst people in Europe? For me, it's the Spanish. They're very loud people, aren't they? <laughs> I don't want to say they're very loud. I mean, of course, the problem is with Spain in relation to Britain is their um, poor treatment of their pig farming. Yeah. Now, in, for, all EU regulations require a certain standard of uh, animal welfare, and the UK regulations are of a higher standard than the EU. Ibirico ham, is that what they call it? Yes, Serrano ham. Exactly. Chorizo. Yes, the lovely chorizo. <laughs> Bloody delicious. It is good. <laughs> it I is mean, good. you cannot knock the quality of their pork I products. don't. I, well, we don't know how the poor pigs have been treated to get there, but we can't knock we can't knock the taste. When you're eating it, you couldn't give a flying fuck. Oh, I know. That, that, yeah. That's the, do you know what I mean? I do. Like, you don't do. stop and think, oh, I wonder if it was mistreated. You're just thinking, no. this is much nicer than, for instance, a Madison's. I, um, fair enough. <laughs> but then, of course, you have the guilt afterwards, like a sleazy one-night stand. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, listen, I appreciate your very candid answers thus far, but now we're going to play a little game. Of course, there have been a lot of scare stories from both sides. Last week, we had Neil Kinnikon sticking up for all the mad shit the Remain camp have been saying. So now, let's see if our guests can defend the preposterous claims from the Leave side as we play Pull the Other One, Liz. It's got bells on. Pull the Other One, Liz. It's got bells on. So, uh, Elizabeth, what we're going to do is run past some of the claims made by the Brexit camp and you tell us whether or not you're, you're pulling our leg on all right. of this, OK? Well done. Well done. Um, right. We'll be flooded by murderers, rapists and terrorists if we stay. Pull the other one, Liz. It's got bells on. <laughs> 
Well, you say that, but it means that we've got an open border, so you can have a situation, you can have a Bulgarian burglar coming into the UK and um, set up home nice and easy. There's absolutely no qualification with regard to criminal convictions. Where's he going to set up home? Probably next door to you. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> OK, leaving the EU is the only way to stop Romanian gypsy gangsters building mansions with our money. Pull the other one. Liz, it's got bells on. I think that leaving the EU would be a good start. We can have border control. They'll have to present ID documents to buy that uh, mansion. And they'll have to pay tax on it. They'll have to pay stamp duty, CGT, and they'll have to pay and register for income tax. Easter eggs will be cheaper next year if we leave the EU. Paul, do you have one? This has got bells on. Well, it won't be next year, maybe a couple of years down the line, but probably will be cheaper because I imagine that um, food prices are going to go down considerably. At the moment, we're in a tight trading block. Mm. So we cannot import easily uh, from Africa, which, of course, has a huge impact on the African economy. And also, with the West Indies, we've not been able to trade and buy uh, their sugar cane. We have to trade within the EU and buy Polish sugar beet, which is a big uh. expense for us. So, yes, I think that's probably right. Not next year, five years' time. Yeah. Vote leave and you'll have cheaper chocolate in five years' time. Uh, I don't want to be racist and offend you, <laughs> but I'll be honest, Polish sugar beet does not sound as appetising as West Indian sugar cane. Well, I agree with you. Curries would be tastier if we left the EU. Pull the other uh, one, uh, Liz. Uh, no, hang on here. On. No, no, no. Hang on here. There's been a survey. Bangladeshi curry house owners have all said that they support Brexit because of the problems of getting their chefs into the country because of the EU regs with regard to open borders and our immigration rules in 2014. So that means any person can shunt into the UK if they're from, based in the EU, whereas we've got the highly specialised Bangladeshi um, curry chefs who can't get into the UK because of visa problems. So, so we, yeah. we want more Bangladeshis in here. We want more curry. Them. We want more curry chefs. Uh, let's have one from the Remain camp now yeah. for you to get your teeth into. We'll pay a lot, for our, a lot more for our holidays if we leave the EU. Well, I, don't, I can't see any reason why on earth we'd be paying more for our holidays. There's absolutely no reason for that at all. It may be that we'd pay, be paying less. Who knows what the currency uh, variation will be between the euro and the sterling when we leave. It could, could transpire that we'd be paying a lot less. Elizabeth, thank you ever so thank much you. for joining us. It's been wonderful talking to you. And that's it. So thanks to my special guest, Elizabeth Jones, and my panel, Stephen K. Amos. Holly Byrne and Helen Wood. And in a week in which we've been faced with tough questions about our personal and financial security, please remember, if you are buying a used Nissan Micra with anything over 80,000 on the clock, make sure you keep an eye out for rust on the exhaust and worn out brake pads, particularly on any late 2002 to 2010 models. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>